We're going to look at our special population groups now. So we're going to have a look at three different types of clients. One with high blood pressure, one with a lower back injury, and the third one with a shoulder injury. So we did five different exercises before with Carly. So we did a test of flexibility, we did a push up, we did a squat, we did some boxing, and we did a bent over row. So we're going to modify these exercises now for someone who has high blood pressure. So basically, we're just going to take into consideration the fact that this client has high blood pressure and that they may not be able to perform these exercises to a high intensity. So we're just going to monitor this client's level of breathing, their heart rate, and we're just going to look for visual signs as well like redness in the face and you know sweating and just ask them how they're, how they're doing generally so we can monitor their level of perceived exertion through the, through the way that they talk. So with our test of flexibility, um, we would get them to do the same exercise. Um, because they're sitting on the ground, they're not going to have a huge rush in blood. There's not going to be any pooling of blood. We just get them to stand up slowly after they've been sitting, just so that they don't get lightheaded. Our next exercise was the push-up, and we got Carly to do it um, on her knees on the ground. We might get a client with high blood pressure to maybe do a push-up on the wall. Um, so that they're standing the whole time and this way they're still working their upper body, they're still working their shoulders and their chest and able to get a good workout from it as well. Our next exercise, the bend over row. Um, so instead of bending over, we might get them to do a seated row instead. So again, that they're still working all the same muscle groups in their back and in their shoulders, but they're not having to bend over. So if they stand up, they don't get a huge rush of blood and they don't get any dizziness. From that either. We also did a squat, uh, so we could do a body weight squat with a person with high blood pressure. We would obviously just monitor their level of intensity and rate of perceived exertion, and we might just get them to do it a little bit slower. So with any of these exercises, um, with a client with an injury or with any kind of medical condition, I would always monitor their technique first and foremost. I'd rather someone do it correctly with proper form then go too hard or too fast and not be able to get the most out of their exercise. So just monitoring this person's heart rate and level of breathing with high blood pressure is really important as well. Now with the boxing, we might do a different exercise. We might, we might do boxing and depending on the severity of the high blood pressure, we might pick a different exercise. So we could do a seated exercise such as cycling, which would still give a cardiovascular effect but just not with as high intensity as something like boxing. So now our second client is a client with lower back pain. And again, I'll go through each of the different exercises we did and just talk about how we can modify them. So a client with lower back pain can still do the test of flexibility. Obviously there might be some tightness or some stiffness. It's a hamstring test, so the hamstring starts in the lower back. So we might get them to either bend their knees or they may not just have as great a reach as someone who didn't have lower back pain or was more flexible. So we might get this person to warm up slightly, so maybe five minutes of cycling just to get the blood flowing to the affected muscles. So that way that it might be a little bit easier to do the sit and reach test. Our next exercise was the push up. And for this one, again, we might do this on our knees um, or standing, pushing against the wall just get them to really concentrate on squeezing their glutes and squeezing their hamstrings, squeezing their quads in order to protect the lower back. With our bent over row, uh, we could do a seated row again. So if they have too much pain from the flexion of the hips having to do the bent over row, we might just get them to do it seated um, at a low row station or with dumbbells and then that way it would be a lot safer for their lower back. Again, depending on the severity of the injury, how long they've had the injury for, is it under control? These are all things that we would have to take into consideration. We'd get that from our pre-exercise screening questionnaire. Our next client um, with lower back pain is now going to get a modified squat. So instead of squatting with weight, we'd always maybe start with body weight just to see what their range of motion is like, if they get any pain associated with that. Can they get to parallel? If not, maybe we modify the exercise. So I usually find that a good exercise for someone with lower back pain is to place a Swiss ball in the middle of their back and use the wall and lean on the wall with the Swiss ball. So they'll squat up and down the wall with the Swiss ball in their lower back in order to activate 
the vastus lateralis and medialis in the quads. I might get them to put a medicine ball in between their knees so they can squeeze that whilst they're squatting up and down with the ball behind them. And that way at least they're leaning on the ball and it's taking the pressure off of their back. Our last one is boxing. So with the boxing, I just always make sure that the client is fully warmed up so that the muscles aren't likely to tear um, while they're working out. And just obviously avoid any huge twisting or rotation movements. So just being careful of the lower back, you know, connected to the pelvis and our core muscles. So any kind of over rotation or any twisting or bending may aggravate their current injury. But again, depending on the severity of the injury, we would have to take that into consideration. Our last client is um, a client with a shoulder injury. Again, we will talk to them about the severity of the injury and what they can and can't do. We may need to test a few things to see what their range of motion and flexibility is like. So with our flexibility, they should be fine to do the sit and reach test if they have no other like leg or lower back problems, no other joint problems. So obviously just making sure that they do the sit and reach test correctly. With our push up, again, just making sure that they use controlled movements, their technique is good, that they're doing it a little bit slower, just so that we can make sure that, you know, with their range of motion, that they're not going to further damage their joints. Otherwise, we may not even do a push up, depending on where the injury is located. Is it anterior, is it posterior, is it rotator cuff, we need to find out exactly the extent of this injury and what they can and can't do. So push-up might be something that we avoid um, just until they build up a little bit of strength. We might work on some mobility through the shoulder, range of motion and flexibility. With the bent over row, again, um, what I would probably get to do for anyone that has a shoulder injury is to have a narrower grip instead of an outward grip, we might just get them to use a narrow grip so that when they're pushing up or when they're rowing, it's a lot easier on the anterior shoulder and they're still gonna work their back muscles and their shoulder muscles as well. So with the squat, um, things we have to consider for someone that maybe has a, a shoulder injury, we would just want them to try and strengthen the knee joints. Um, again, you could use a Swiss ball squat, you could do it body weight and again, depending on what kind of rotation or flexibility they have, you may do it with or without a barbell for weight. You could always get them to hold dumbbells in each hand for added weight to their squat. But again, this is just something that we would test and, and see how we progress over time. With boxing, again, because it uses a lot of upper body strength and a lot of upper body movement, we might get them to do a different test for the cardiovascular activity. So until they kind of build up maybe a bit of strength in their shoulders, in their back, in their chest, they're okay with rotation through the midsection and through the hips, we might get them to do a different exercise. We might get them to jump on the treadmill and do some walking, jogging, running, might get them to jump on the bike and do some sprints, some Tabata sprints, some intervals. Again, we just need to see what this client can do and, and work with that. Uh, just a couple of things to keep in, in consideration with any client, whether they have an injury or not, is to just always use the correct, te and correct technique and format. So I always make sure that my client is warmed up. I explain each and every movement to the client, why we're doing it, what muscle groups we're working and what benefit this will have to us. So Carly's goal was to lose weight. Um, she also wanted to be fitter and healthier and happier. So each of those different exercises were appropriate to her goals. Just monitor the client's um, level of perceived exertion. So particularly with someone that may have an injury. So just monitoring their breathing, their heart rate. Um, how well are they talking back to you? Um, visually looking at them. So are they red in the face? Are they sweating? And using those kind of visual and verbal cues. And always I would allow the client to rest if needed. So if it became too much for the client, if they do have some kind of limited capability, we may not do as many repetitions. Uh, we might have an extended period of rest. We may not do as many sets. So again, just working with the client and what they need. The last thing would be, depending on the location and the extent of their range of motion of the injury, 
would determine what exercises we can and can't do. So always working with the client to find a suitable way to still get the best workout and still get um, towards their goals. So thank you for listening to me. <laughs>